Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be discussing the question Game of Life. In this question, we are given a board which is made up of M cross N grid of cells, with the E cells has an initial state that is life represented by 1 and dead represented by 0. Now, E cell interacts with the 8 neighbors, horizontal, vertical and diagonal using the following rules and then it gets a new state. We need to give the new state matrix. So in the first example, as we can see, this is the current matrix and it changes to this after applying all the rules given to us. We'll directly jump onto the code for this question and explain it line by line while we do it. There's a follow up question attached with this problem, which asks us to do that in, in place. We'll see this approach once we have finished with uh, coding the basic code. So let's see how we can code this. We'll have a new array which will be result of size m cross n we need to define those variables now as we need to apply a logic on every cell we need to iterate over whole array Now for every cell we need to check its adjacent 8 neighbors as given in this question itself and then apply the logic according to whatever fits in the 4 cases given to us. So as we need to go into the 4 directions we will define a direction array. Now we need to count the number of live cells in this 8 neighbors. And in order to do so, we loop on the direction array. Now the new row will be in the new column. We need to check if they are inside the boundary. And if the value in the board at this cube position is 1, then we need to increment the count of the number so we'll declare this count outside once we are done with this we'll have the count of the number of live cells around this particular cell and then we need to apply the conditions given to us so there will be two scenarios if either the current value is a live or it is not a live cell so if it is a live cell then we need to provide these three conditions so if it is a live cell with fewer than two live neighbors it dies as caused by underpopulation any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation as initially all the values in the result will be zero so these conditions is not needed for us we'll jump on to the second that is if the value is two or three then it lives on to the next generation so if the count is two or it is three then we'll update the result of this ijb1. Now, any live cell with more than 3 will die. That is, already it is 0. Now, the last condition is, if any dead cell is there and there are exactly 3 live neighbors, then it becomes a live cell. That means, if the count 3, then the result of becomes 1. These complete all the conditions that we have. Now we need to move all the values that are in this result and into the board as the return type of this function is void. So we need to update the existing array. So now we will iterate over the array again and copy all the values that are there into the existing array. Now when we run this code. It gives us the right result. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. Now coming to the follow up question. It states that can we do it in, in place. Uh, that is without using any extra memory. So we'll start off with uh, commenting out this. We still need to iterate over the array. So we'll have this for loop. And we do need to iterate over all the adjacent neighbors. So we'll have this an account variable. Now. If the board value was 1 and we were 
previously having 2 and 3 then we were adding the value 1 in this particular position but as this value is already 1 we need not to update this so this will change now if the value of the cell was live and it has fewer than 2 or greater than 3 then it dies that means there is a state change when there are less than 2 neighbors live or greater than 3 neighbors that are live. So in that case we need to have a flag or any value that we can be sure that the board value should be dead. So in that case we will take the value as 2. So we have covered all the live conditions because in this second condition for live it will already is live. So it will live on to the next generation. Now any dead cell with exactly 3 neighbors will become a live cell as if by reproduction. So if it is already dead and the count was 3 then we need to update the board with the value 3. We are doing this so that we know that it was previously dead and now it is live. So 3 represent the value that it was dead previously and now it is alive while 2 represents that it was previously alive and now it has become dead. Now when we are checking for how many adjacent neighbors are alive we were checking only for one but now we know that the value 2 was also alive previously so we need to put that condition as well in here. This means it is either 1 that is now also it is alive and 2 that it was previously alive but in the new state it will be dead. We have updated the whole array in place and now we need to make all the values in the form of 0 or 1 only. So rather than copying all the values that we were previously doing, we can have either have an if else condition for 1, 2 and 3 or we can directly do a mod 2 in which if the value is 1 that it was alive in the new state also it will be 1. If it is 3 then also it will be 1 and if it is 2 then it should be dead that means it will be dead that is 0. So now when we run this code, it gives us right result as well. Let's submit this. So it also got submitted successfully. As we know the time complexity of this approach will now become O of n and space complexity will now be O of 1. Now the second follow up question is that in this question we represent the board array using a 2D array. In principle the board is infinite which would cause a problem when the active area encroaches upon the border of the array. That is live cells reach the border. How would you address this problem? So in this problem what they are saying is if the board was so long that it cannot be fit into a memory. In this case either we can store only the live cells position because the matrix can would be sparse. Uh, that is the scenario where there are more number of dead cells than the live cells in the matrix. So storing only the position of the live cells will help us and find the value. But in order to do so we need to hold the whole matrix into the array for once which is not possible. So we can have an another approach wherein we keep only one row at a time into a file and then process it sequentially. That's it for this question. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.